Hi everybody, thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Venkat. I'm going to be your host and moderator for this session. This topic is about understanding the reasons why enterprises need to host EVS on cloud infrastructure. This is presented by Ravi Reddy and Sai Baba Bandi. Uh, thank you Ravi and Sai for taking time to share insights about uh, hosting EVS on cloud infrastructure. Thank you Venkat. Uh, my name is Ravi Reddy. I'm the um, uh, founder and CEO of Sumera Technologies. Um, I'll do a quick introduction of what we do and more importantly, um, some share some experiences uh, as an organization since we've done quite a few uh, migrations. Uh, there are a lot of interesting experiences and that we would like to share today. Um, and I also have my colleague, Sai Baba, if you want to introduce yourself, Sai. Yep, yep. Hi. Thanks, Sari. And thanks, uh, Venkat. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sai Baba. Uh, 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 and I lead the pre-sales uh, for the enterprise applications uh, across for Oracle uh, applications. Yeah. And today, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Sari. Yeah. All right. So let's get started. Um, you know, I see people are still joining. So as as they join, we think they'll follow through. Since we have a pretty tight schedule, let's get started. So, so as, as the title says, right, a lot of businesses are, you know, struggling to create a business case. Now, while what we are noticing, having worked with over 400 customers in last 14 years, especially in last three years, there is no CIO today who says cloud is second. Everybody is today talking about cloud first. Having said that, why do we have only less than 10% of Oracle EBS customers have yet embraced cloud infrastructure? Less than 10%. 90% haven't yet started the journey to cloud. Now there is a reason why, right? And we will understand those reasons. And once we understand the reasons, then we can appreciate the benefits. And then hopefully by the end of the session today, you, you're able to take away those compelling reasons why you should look at lifting your Oracle EBS from on-prem and moving it onto cloud infrastructure, but also take away some of the important business reasons why you should be doing this sooner than later so that you can create a compelling business case. And that business case, if it is compelling enough, we expect that there's a lot more acceleration to cloud than it is today. So hopefully by the end of this next half an hour, 45 minutes, we are able to create that and able, enable you with some takeaways so that you can take to your stakeholders and create a business case. Now, so we'll spend you know, about two minutes on Sonata Tech, what we do for a living, and then get into those five important reasons what we have assimilated for you in terms of why um, you should move EBS to cloud. And then, you know, having done dozens of these migrations, just EBS migrations, we have uh, cracked the code of how can we migrate EBS to cloud, at, you know, at zero cost, what we call self-funded. How do we, you know, avoid going to the CFO and the, and the board and asking for additional funding to migrate EBS onto cloud infrastructure? Then once you go through that, you'll see, you know, what's the proven approach and methodology. And then we'll also take a success case study um, if the time permits. And we'll open for questions, you know, feel free to, as we go along, feel free to key in, type in your questions. Venkat will moderate those questions uh, and we'll leave good 10, 15 minutes at the end to answer all questions you may have. So feel free to type in your questions as we go along. Now, as an organization, we are born in cloud. Uh, you know, we started our cloud journey in 2008. Um, 
we started, as you can see, we started investing. We started investing in building a lot of digital solutions. Through these cloud-based and cloud-native digital solutions, we were able to acquire so many customers and enable them to migrate to cloud. What we've also done is we've invested in Innovation Lab that takes all 100 plus cloud services and, and assembles them to build pre-built solutions such that when you move to cloud, you're able to accelerate your innovation journey. So you don't have to you take the traditional approach of building from scratch. So in the cloud, the, the, the commoditization of technology is, is kicking in pretty aggressively as businesses are moving to cloud, they're able to take advantage of significant cloud services and accelerate their innovation faster. Now, having said that, uh, with, you know, how are we enabling? Now we call this as a three switch approach. Three switch approach for self-funded cloud migration. And we believe cloud migration is a foundation for innovation. The, what are the three switches? Switch one is how can you use these digital solutions to drive automation? because automation eliminates inefficiencies. And once you eliminate inefficiencies, you can use those funds for cloud migration. Now, cloud migration is not just about cost. Cloud is also about agile, agility, and it's also about asset light. Asset light is important because we are all used to buying hardware, we are all used to buying software and sitting with those perpetual licenses that, that removes the, the flexibility that we have. Because today, one thing that is certain for all businesses, one thing that is certain for all businesses is uncertainty. There is no business that can give you a certain projections for next three years. There's no business because businesses are sitting with only two options. Either you go disrupt or get disrupted. So if you do not embrace cloud as an asset light infrastructure, as an agile enterprise platform, then you are that much farther away from innovation because innovation is all about experimentation. So for us to drive innovation, we have to embrace cloud from, for many reasons. And for us to really self-fund because no CIOs are getting new capital budgets for driving cloud. So we have to smartly figure out to release funding, release cash, release, bring efficiency so that we can self-fund the cloud migration. Now we've done this, we've done hundreds of these, and we'll talk about that. Now we talked about this um, cloud digital innovation, and this is important because as most cloud initiatives, the business cases are stronger. The business cases are stronger for cloud migration when you understand the North Star of what does digital innovation mean for the business? How cloud services can enhance the customer experience, enhance the engagement with customers and suppliers, enhance the supply chain, visibility, traceability. If we can connect the dots from these if digital innovations from horizon one, from cloud transformation, how that can drive data monetization, application modernization that will accelerate your digital innovation. If we can connect the dot to that North Star of digital innovation, then this cloud transformation initiative that you have where you want to move your EBS and peripheral applications to cloud infrastructure will get its due urgency. So that's the whole objective. How do we create the sense of urgency to move your existing ERP like EBS onto cloud by enabling the business to understand the, the art of possibilities? Now you'll see that 
in the next few slides you'll see that how do we create how do we create that business case by tightening up the entire value proposition of cloud migration not just cost reduction because of infrastructure migration now these are some of the customers over 200 customers that we've you know various customers half of these customers have embraced cloud by leveraging some of the digital and cloud solutions and half of them have migrated their workloads to cloud right so they embrace cloud for innovation some of them have embraced cloud solutions for innovation and some of them have migrated their assets workload from on prem or colo data center to cloud this is a representative client and we'll take some of these examples today right we'll take we'll look at how we've uh, done migration let's say for meritor it's a fortune 500 and how we did a zero cost cloud migration so let's get now into the the ebs specific because we are all here to understand how did we create a business case to get EBS migration funded. Now, of course, there are these personas that have an influence on, on migration decision, right? Your CIO, the cloud architects, the line of business, the supply chain marketing, because all of these folks are the super users or the users of your ERP. Hence, they have a say. Of course, your financial buying influence is your CFO who has to fund this. Now, every EBS migration has to have something for all of these stakeholders. Because just because you save money doesn't mean these stakeholders are going to embrace the urgency. So it's important, right, as we discussed earlier that the line of business has to see the, the, the purpose of migration to cloud in that innovation, how it translate into efficiency or new customer acquisition. Now we said Epix, we gave five reasons as coined the word Epix, agility, performance, innovation, cost and security are the five primary reasons to migrate to cloud. Now let's take a few specific examples from an EBS perspective, because these are, one would say these are, these would be common for various other workloads too. Now from an EBS perspective, very important to understand that in EBS, the reason, the reason why significant number of EBS customers don't apply those patches that Oracle is constantly releasing. And a lot of EBS customers have said, if ain't broken, don't fix it. Because there is a stigma that if you apply and patch that, not only that it takes an enormous amount of DBA time, a patch takes an enormous amount of DBA time, but it also takes significant amount of user time for testing the patch. So you need to bring the users from their business as usual activities to really go through the entire regression testing before a patch moves into production. Now you will see how migrating the cloud completely eliminates that. Completely eliminates the need for users to be available for testing and completely eliminates the need for DBA to apply a patch. Because when you migrate an EBS to cloud, you would get the complete automation suite as we said, three switch approach. First thing is automate everything that can be automated such that business users don't see risk of, you know, you know, the risk of, see the line of business don't want to make their time available for testing if, if the reason of migrating to cloud is only technical. Similarly, a lot of Every time you need, a, in, you need an EBS environment today, there are customers, it takes a week. If they don't have the ready-made infrastructure and that they are hosted with a, at the third party data center, it could take two months before you provision a new EBS environment. 
In cloud, it's a matter of an hour or hours. On demand, we can provision environments. So all these flexibilities and agility that you get is significantly valuable, especially when you are, you want to embrace all the new capabilities that are being released, both in EBS and around EBS. From a performance perspective, this is my favorite. My favorite is performance because grossly underestimated in terms of how the latest high computing infrastructure in cloud significantly improves the user experience. At the end of the day, if users are able to run the reports in seconds and in minutes, and if the nightly bad jobs are finishing on time, and application login and the, the forms are popping up in the split second, that is what you can get in cloud infrastructure. Unbelievable amount of performance gain. You know, in some cases we have seen 10 times, 10 times improvement in the performance of reports at the, at the speed at which it runs. And fundamentally because you're sitting on a world-class next generation compute infrastructure. And that infrastructure, you don't have to buy today and worry about it. You know, every, your, the infrastructure is always, you're always going to be on latest and greatest infrastructure. You don't have to be running on a last season infrastructure. You don't want to be on a, in an old Apple phone running with the new apps. So performance, innovation, of course, innovation, because, you know, if you're able to, you know, what we are able to do, as you will see in the next slide or two is we're able to connect the dots and show the art of possibilities of these hundred plus cloud services available on both the IaaS and PaaS and assemble them to demonstrate the value and the innovation that a business can embrace in phase one, phase two, phase three. It's super powerful, right? As part of this, as when, we, when we assemble the, 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 the possibilities of these hundreds of cloud services and demonstrate that to line of businesses and how they can track their inventory real time, real time through IoT. And when you tell your procurement and your, and your AP team that your millions of your invoices that we process every year can be, can be processed with zero touch because there are cloud services that enable us to process our invoices with zero touch that is sitting on top of your EPS. That's powerful. And, and, and by the way, when you tell them to the line of businesses, by the way, there is zero dollars that we have to invest in this innovation upfront. Because in the world of consumerization of technology, you pay for when you get the outcome. It's consumption driven economy. That's why it's called consumerization of technology. So when you when your innovation is consumed by the business, that is when you end up paying for these innovations. And that is a very important difference. If we understand that and embrace the power of that, I think you can create enormous sense of urgency for migrating to EBS to cloud. Now let's, from a cost perspective, of course, most 38% uh, is an average of the 100 customers we've migrated. There are customers who've gained 52% saving from a cost perspective. There are a few customers who've only gained 12%. So anywhere between 12% to 52%. But there is saving. At least there is 12%. Even if your data center is not coming for renewal, and even if you have a data center that the hardware is not coming for a refresh cycle for next year and a half, even if you are hosted at a third party data center, which is not coming for a renewal until December, 2021. This 12% is those situations where you have a committed spend with your existing hosting provider, but you can't get out of it. Sonera Tech has figured out a way to get you at least 12% saving 
even in the case where you have a committed contract with a third party data center now not, but let's not let's not lose the sight of the power of agility performance and innovation just because savings is only 12%. That's important. And last but not the least, security. World, you know, the, the security on cloud has so, so matured. Today, there are customers who prefer to have their entire security landscape on cloud vis-a-vis on-prem for various reasons. Their security products are matured. The enterprise security infrastructure on the cloud is proven. I don't think security should be any reason for us not to embrace the, the power of cloud, the possibilities in cloud. Now, one may say, hey, you know, all that is good, but I still, um, I'm, still not convinced you know some of this data should convince you some of these data should convince you only 73 percent of the erp data today is effectively used by business in fact this number is 86 percent by gartner gartner thinks only 13 to 14 percent of data sitting in erp is being effectively used by the line of businesses to make decisions that's a huge opportunity to monetize that data. Gartner says that 22%, only 22% of customers are being enabled with self-service BI. 22% of ERP customers are being enabled by self-service. That's a huge opportunity for us to really enable business to get the data when they need enable them with data when they need instead of businesses being reliant on IT. I think this you will be able to change. Of course, Oracle feels 49% of enterprises see faster time for deployment. That being one of the key reasons to migrate to cloud. There's another research that recently as early as March this year that Gartner published that 33% in of businesses every year are going to embrace cloud for automating business processes. Business process are automation powered by RPA, whether it is order to cash, procure to pay, hire to retire, record to report, or even forecast to complete. A lot of business transactions in these are repeatable transactions that can be automated by RPA straight out of the bat when you move to cloud. And this is becoming the number one reason during this pandemic that businesses are expecting to come out of pandemic with a lot of automation in enabling businesses to become super efficient by, by embracing RPA on top of ERP. So these are the four important data points that I think should be, along with the five reasons, can help you when put together, can create a compelling business case as to why move EBS to cloud infrastructure. Now let's say you've got all this, what's the approach? Now we understood the why, let's get into the what piece of it. So, what is the approach? Now you understand why cloud, let's understand what's the approach. So this is, let's pay some attention to here, uh, to this slide because it's a busy slide, but wanted to make sure that when you bring the, the eight, eight things together, right? Number one to number eight, if you want, there is a, you're able to create this whole self-funded business transformation. So let's start from number eight. Let's start from the end in mind. Right. Let's start with an end in mind. What is the end? You want in six months 
you want to see yourself here. You want to be automating the business processes, users to make sure that they are automating invoices and procurement transaction completely automated. And you want to use bots to, to do the password resets. You want bots, chat bots to address your level one tickets. And you want to embrace the self-service BI, which we call data next as a platform to provide insights that are coming out of EBS. So you want to enable business with insights, automate service desk, automate business processes. Now what we are guaranteeing that any business that wants to move to cloud, what Sunera Tech has done is it has made the cloud, it, it, has, it has made Oracle Cloud an intelligent cloud platform to drive the intelligent enterprise. That means the moment, so if you see intelligent cloud platform powered by Oracle Cloud, the moment we move the lift EBS onto cloud infrastructure, you're able to, you're able to take advantage of all these solutions that are available on Oracle Cloud infrastructure from day one. That's why we call intelligent cloud platform. Now, so for, for us to really get here, the question is, how fast can I get there? So what we've done, when you look at the existing run the business, existing EBS install base, there's a significant OPEX cost on infrastructure, your licenses, your manual DBA activities, functional support cost. Right? Now, what we are doing here is bringing this cost down. Now, how are we bringing this cost down? Number one, we talked about just by moving your infrastructure from on-prem or third-party hosting to Oracle Cloud infrastructure, we, we are guaranteeing that you'll get 25% savings. Guarantee. Because you don't pay us until you get those savings, by the way. That's the part of zero-cost cloud migration program is you only pay us the zero-cost cloud migration program, you only pay us after you realize the savings. We migrate, we, enable, we help you migrate all your EBS assets to cloud. What we are also bringing together is, is by additional saving by eliminating the patching and application deployment cost by give, enabling you with our product called Ringmaster. Some of you may have heard Ringmaster has been a, a platform that has been used by over 250 businesses in automating their entire patching and entire lifecycle management deployment from dev to test to prod has been completely automated using Ringmaster. And even if you're doing an upgrade, let, let's say if you're on 11i or release 12.0, 12.1, and you want to move to 12 to 9, we have automated way of identifying all your camelies and the impact of those camelies will have when we do the migration to cloud. So Ringmaster is a complete application lifecycle management automation. Not just patching, complete lifecycle automation. You also get, as part of this, you also get cloud tester on Oracle cloud infrastructure, which eliminates the need for users to be available for all the CRPs for testing. What's important here is during this pandemic situation, a lot of businesses don't have all the users for doing the testing required. So what we have done is we've captured, we've automated that entire testing so that you, the dependency that I otherwise would be there on users availability can be reduced significantly. So what otherwise 
So we've reduced the dependency on user by close to 80%. And by automating this, you're again reducing the cost of your run the business cost. Because post migrating to cloud, you're every time you want to do testing, every time you want to do patching and post patching testing is automated. One other important service you would get on cloud is called Automass. Automass has the machine learning and AI capability to understand it is map all your 250 odd KPIs in EBS for all the processes are already pre-mapped. That means we, for the first time, you could give insights to your business users as to because these 250 KPIs have the ability to build the alerts, define them and notify the users whenever there is a transaction that in EBS that you need, you feel that users should be notified about. So Automass enables that. Last but not the least, number five is we have identified at least 5% we believe there is savings available by license rationalization. Rationalization, unification, consolidation, and aggregation. You, this is a fantastic opportunity to eliminate all the excess that you pay for your excess licenses and excess infrastructure. All that can be optimized by rationalizing and unifying. And while migrating EBS, we we believe that at least 55%, not, if not more. Now, when we add all this up, you're looking at between 40 to 60% savings. When you add all this up in a steady state at the end of three to six months, when we have successfully migrated to cloud, you're looking at net realized savings of 40 to 60%. So now you heard, you know, what does it take to migrate? Now the question is, you know, what do I need to consider before I migrate? What are the key considerations? So we assembled, I let uh, Sai kind of walk us through, you know, because he's the practitioner, he's been in, in, in conversation every day in and day out with significant number of customers and let him share, you know, his experiences on, on considerations before migrating EBS to cloud. Thank you, Ravi. Uh, that was an insightful, uh, uh, in some insightful uh, points that you shared. Yeah. So, so for any business or an organization before embarking on the journey of Oracle cloud to migrate to Oracle cloud infrastructure, it is not just a migrating an infrastructure to infrastructure. This is an opportunity to evaluate and assess and potentially be digital ready, right? So it should not be looked at as an opportunity to just migrate to infrastructure. So some of the considerations and top 20 considerations which are assembled here is based on our experiences of migrating various customers. Okay. Now business, what are the, some of the key business considerations that have to be taken uh, uh, taken into uh, consideration basically, right? So the, what are the dependencies of business, you know, in terms of the monthly and quarterly uh, closing cycles? Okay. That, is, that is one of the key parameter. And some, similarly, what are the application critical? You will have mission critical applications like your financial applications, your order management applications, right? Your sales applications. So what are the dependency and what are the various integrations within each of those applications that has to be factored in. In terms of infrastructure, now <clears throat> some of the customers may have various operating, different operating versions maintained for different applications for legacy or third party systems and we service the EBS systems. So that also has to be taken into consideration because the mapping is very important, right? The mapping, the mapping is important with this, with the target system. So that has to be taken into consideration. And what are the existing contractual obligations? Whether the data center refreshes, when is it, uh, when, when is it due for refresh and what is the uh, cost implications? All that has to be factored in. Similarly, security and compliance requirements are some of, is a very important 
factor to be considered because some of the businesses like a financial and insurance businesses are very compliance centric security compliance centric that also has to be taken into consideration from the technology standpoint what are the various ebs applications in use what is the version okay what is this the size of the kemli components like your interfaces your reports because from the time ebs would have implemented during the course of journey of the business growth to accommodate the business growth technology would have grown in size and scale okay so there were a lot of kemli so that also has to be taken into consideration and what is the size of the database okay how much data data is there so that the target architecture has to be set up according to the infrastructure and the technology in use now operations operations is is one of the key i mean consideration because it has to be compatible what is the backup strategy right you would have I mean, a business would have i mean various backup strategies so what happens to the backup data all that also has to be considered and what is the oem support for 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 the for the infrastructure or for the various applications legally applications which are there because that also has to be mapped okay all these are some of the key considerations which have to be well documented in advance and prepared as business case and assess the impact of migration and whether we are whether the business or and the enterprise is ready for the migration with risk free migration now <clears throat> based on my experiences we have segmented the migrations into these four areas now if this is an as is migration where the uh, the uh, version is 12.2.x and the database version is greater than 12 and the size of the data is less than 2 terabytes then it is a pure lift and shift where the typical time frame could range anywhere between 2 to 3 months and where the os is also on linux the current uh, source is linux and target is also linux so from the medium organizations from the medium uh, lift and shift where it we accommodate a dot upgrade let's say if you are if a customer is on 12.2.5 or 6 then we migrate and it says a dot upgrade to the latest version which is 12.2.9 or 12.2.10 and the linux the operating system is linux and the database size is less than 2 2 tb and the typical time frame is about 5 to 6 months now the the third <clears throat> enterprise which falls into this uh, the segment of largest where there might be few customers who are still on learn 510 Right? and the database is 12 or less so and the current operating model is linux and the target is also linux and the database size is less than 8 tb and which is an if where if we have to configure then a high availability dr configuration and we have to move those enterprises then the typical time frame is 6 to 9 months along with the migrate along with the migrate and upgrade in terms of large enterprises where you have various different operating systems different database versions you have too many legacy systems i mean too many complexities of your kemlis and integrations and database size is huge then the, the typical time frame would take anywhere between 9 to 12 months so this is based on our experience along with uh, which we have categorized yeah <clears throat> So yeah so basically yeah. what you're saying yeah. is anywhere between 2 yeah. months to 9 months and yeah. if if you have most complex right now we are doing one migration which we have budgeted almost 7 months because they have 1100 camelies that needs to be migrated with uh, plain old java integrations and and a uh, significant number of applications are natively built in peripheral to ebs um, so so that kind of becomes very complicated but yes yeah Now, for the migration journey to be successful, the strategy is important. We don't call it just a methodology; it is a strategy. Now, one of the key phases of the strategy is doing an assessment. Now, what do we do in the assess phase? We capture the EBS and peripheral applications along with infrastructure, the licenses inventory, and see if if some of that can be rationalized, right? And identify the risk and limitations for migration, as as we said, deliberated in in, in the earlier slide. 
there could be various different applications with different operating systems, different hardware. So uh, we identify the risks and, and categorize into different workload migration. And similarly, the business expectations and the readiness analysis, you know, from the business side, the migration cutover is very important. We do not want to do a migration when uh, a year enclosure is due, right? when, when the fiscal reporting is happening. So we do all that assessment. Now, similarly, from the network and security and compliance requirements, so the, the latency is, what is the latency which is required? Or no, maybe, so all that is factored in as part of assessment phase. And then we document the risk or the potential risk which we have factored in as part of the assessment phase. And then we design or target environment architecture based on the source applications, the databases, size, and various compliance and security requirements. Now, in design phase, we decide whether it has to be a big bang migration or it has to be phased migration. We may migrate the database workloads first and the application workloads, or it can be all together in one phase. So we design as part of the, which we documented as part of the assessment phase. So, and we prepare a testing strategy okay, so that we, Scenarios are identified when we migrate. Okay? That is key with zero downtime. Okay? And validate, we, we approach, we take an approach, and if required, if, if it is too complex where you have various systems, we also take some, sometimes a POC based approach, approach where we migrate some of the workloads, test it, iterate it, document the risk, and capture the mitigation for migrating the other workloads. So we do an iterative process of sometimes we do a POC. Now we validate these migrations incrementally. We do not want to migrate everything when we do some pilot and then say validate and say that, you know, we do not want to miss anything in the source. So when we do a cutoff, it's a clean cutoff. So that is the whole objective of this, of this, of our framework. And, and once we go live, then we release the system to validate uh, to the users. Uh, in terms of, for example, uh, some of the metrics can be when the, uh, if the, all the orders have been migrated, if the, all the open, um, the invoices have been migrated, the count of the invoices is matching from the source system. The order, the, the orders are matching to the, to the source system. So once we confirm and get a sign off, that, that is when we release the system for production and we get a sign off from the business. So these are the four phase approach that we take. And this is this we have employed in uh, with the various customers that we have uh, migrated successfully, and and with zero risk. Now some of the differentiators that we have deployed as part of the uh, migration and and upgrade. Okay, some of the customers who are on twelve dot one three, they also upgrade. We recommend them to upgrade once they move to the cloud infrastructure. So what happens is when you uh, migrate and upgrade, which is a recommended approach of Sunera Tech, you're not only using the features of the cloud infrastructure and of provisioning, faster provisioning for the upgrade lifecycle, you're also avoiding and iteration of testing at the, while you're on on-premise. So when you migrate, so some of the uh, platform tools that we deploy for, for uh, the retrofit Kimli assessment, okay, when you do an assessment, we run this platform on the environment to bring out the Kemli objects and components of the customizations which will impact it when you upgrade to the latest version of 12.2.9 or 12.2.10. And so, and, and this, what this, this tool does is, it brings out the, only the impacted objects. Let's say if a customer has 5,000 custom objects, it brings out saying that, okay, the only, only 500 are impacted. And, as part of the overall approach, then we estimate rightly, we do a right sizing saying that, okay, this is the uh, update timeline which should take, and this is the number of test cycles which is required. So this platform helps us doing that. Now we also have a patch automation. So when we apply the patches from 12.1.3 to 12.2.9, it is not a direct patch upgrade to 12.2.9. We first have to go to 12.2.3 and then subsequently apply the patch to 12.2.9 or 12.10. So this patch automation tool, tells us what are the objects which are impacted. Okay. Then the business can take a call whether they would go with the new functionality of the sum of the features or it is not required. But that would help in strategizing the upgrade lifecycle. 
Well, similarly, Cloud Tester. Now, Cloud Tester, again, is a tool where uh, Ravi has explained uh, uh, earlier. We automated the test scenarios when we do when we do an upgrade i mean iterative upgrade when on the dev on the dev test systems integration testing pre prod and prod when we run the scenarios the test life cycle automation of the users comes down by significantly from 70 to 80 percent and we have automated for customers about 300 250 to 300 business scenarios where we are running this tool now similarly for when the code migration when we make the changes impacted changes Deploying this DAT tool, we can deploy from it automates, and you do we do not have to go and use the SVN tool or other tools to manually migrate. This tool automatically picks up from the uh, from the environment and migrates to the other environment. So we deploy these differentiators, which will further save significant of time, users effort, and cost. So thereby realizing the benefits which uh, Ravi has explained in the earlier slide. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Sai. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's helpful. So, as, as Sai mentioned, right? I think the when you move to cloud, all these are available to you, so you don't have to worry about provisioning infrastructure. These are all available in the cloud on consumption basis. And if we are doing your migration, these are all available for free, right? They're all part of the migration. So, our goal here is to is really align with your end vision of delivering the 40 to 60% saving and enabling you to become an intelligent enterprise. You know, these platforms are already hosted in the cloud marketplace and we don't have to uh, do the three months of provisioning and installing and implementing. All that has been taken care of. That's the power of cloud. Um, yes. the, uh, I'll just wrap this up given in, in the interest of time. So, yeah. You know, like Sai mentioned, I think what we offer to you, two weeks of free cloud migration assessment. These are the th six important things that we will do in that assessment. This is a two weeks engagement. We understand your objectives, define that for you from all dimensions. We have a tool that runs to discover your business and IT landscape, exactly how your um, your what versions, what uh, infrastructure, integrations, all dependencies documented. Assess the impact of that. If opportunity presents, rationalize the assets we talked about, whether it is infrastructure, you know, licenses, rationalization, infrastructure, and excess capacity rationalization. Define the financial ROI by doing this. Uh, so, you know, what would you get at the end of the day? Uh, what would it cost for you to manage this, right? All this, define the total cost of ownership. And last, you will get a business case which has the complete EBS project plan. So migration approach. The, so these documents, are, these are the six deliverables that you can present as a business case to your leadership as part of this two weeks. So any of you who have an interest to say, you know, and there's no conditions apply. So uh, this enable you to, we, we enable you to create a business case and we enable you to guarantee certain uh, savings. We believe that we will be the closest to be your chosen partner of choice. Now, having said that, we talked about zero cost cloud migration. You know, how do we, enable you to do this entire migration to cloud at no upfront cost. We work with the cloud service provider. We write up the contract as an MSP. We invest upfront in buying the Oracle cloud bill of materials on behalf of you. We buy, we pay to Oracle for the, let's say if it takes six months to migrate, for the six months, we have to buy the Oracle cloud infrastructure or cl cloud infrastructure of your choice. And then we have to invest in migration services. Plus we bring our tools together. All this for the six months, you don't have to pay. Now I'll show you with a case study though. Here's a case study. Here's a, here's a business, Fortune 500, 80 plus workloads, 
Oracle EBS, Supply Chain, OTM, JD, PeopleSoft. We migrated all of this from an IBM data center to Oracle cloud infrastructure in eight months. In eight months, this gives you an idea. Complete 80 plus production workloads sitting in a data center. This customer was paying IBM north of $10 million per year for the entire infrastructure and managed services. In year zero, we've invested in the entire infrastructure and migration services. Post migration, Merito realized $4.68 million savings that they reduced. This is saving that they realized after they, they ended up, you know, after our, our fees paying our Sunera tech. So this 4.68 million savings, re net savings realized is after all the expenses plus Sunera tech fees, 4.68 million. Now, three important things to note here. One, CIO didn't have, we, we partnered with the CIO organization to make sure that they don't have to go to CFO to asking for more funding, number one. Number two, we guaranteed that all application workloads will migrate. This was, we migrated all of them by October 30th, 2019 in this case. We guaranteed that every, every single day that is beyond the October 30th, Sunera Tech will pay IBM, not Meritor, because we understand the cloud better. We have created a roadmap. We know all your dependencies. So that is the risk that we take away from you. That's huge for business. When you are guaranteeing a go live and you are saying, hey, we don't have to extend because our partner understands this, that's huge. And lastly, we get paid only when you are successful. We get paid only when you're successful. So this is what we call zero cost cloud migration. It can be done just for EBS. We don't have to do entire data center. It can be just done for EBS, one or 10 or 100 workload, doesn't matter. All right, we'll take questions now. Um, we have a few minutes and um, really appreciate uh, you guys listening through this. And, uh, you know, there's a question from Matt. Uh, can you elaborate as to the effort and time it takes to automate testing for a business? Each business is unique, so it's not going to be out of the box. Absolutely. No, having done so many automation engagements, um, the, it takes about, so for, let me take an example, right? Um, we automated uh, EBS uh, for, let's say, Vertex. And, and, and I'm taking Vertex as an example because a lot of you who have EBS use Vertex for tax updates. And Vertex as a software company also has EBS. We've automated their entire EBS in less than 60 days. Now, yeah, so, so it takes about 60 to 90 days for us to automate. Um, and only in, in Vertex case, 70% of our existing repository was reused. Um, the important factor is you don't have to do three things. You don't have to buy compute. You don't have to buy a software for automation and you don't have to maintain those test cases. It, it's automatic test cases and test data management. That is the disruption that cloud tester, it's called cloud tester, C-L-O-U-D-T-E-S-T-R, cloudtester.com or soneratech.com and you can navigate cloud tester. We'll be happy to do a demo for you, Matt. Then right. any other question? Yeah, so there's not another question. So how is the RPA implementation going to be different whether EBS is on cloud or not? A fantastic question. I think the, 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 the power of um, cloud, if you are not looking for a self-funded, if you are looking for an RPA to play a role, even if you are in on-prem, of course you can use RPA in on-prem. 
Um, but you need to build those integrations. So three, three benefits of being in cloud for RPA. One, you're able to use your savings in that you realize from cloud migration to invest in RPA initiatives, number one. Number two, you are getting taking advantage of pre-built integrations that you don't have to build because at the end of the day, any RPA need to be integrated into onto your EBS. Three, you are taking advantage of the performance of cloud compute because a lot of EBS customers, we see that they are sitting on old hardware. So, so there are those unknowns in terms of infrastructure performance, but as far as the application, since the application itself does not change, whether it is on-prem or cloud, the application configurations don't change, it doesn't matter. But I think in cloud, you can take advantage of the, the, the benefits of cloud, a lot, lot more than being on on-prem. But the RPAs are available, plug in, whether you are on-prem or on cloud. All right. Uh, Any, yeah, so how does cloud bridge the gap between disparate systems with BI? Most of the problem is the large number of systems people have that are not connected. Yeah, no, that's an important question. Important question because that's the that's the, the the nature of the beast. You know, over last decade or two, we all have ended up creating disparate systems around you know reporting, and you know I wouldn't be wrong by saying seventy percent of EBS customers today use OBIE barely for reporting barely for reporting you know the amount of obi cons, uh, adoption uh, so having said that i think what we have done to solve the problem we've created what we call data next which is how do we eliminate all the different sources of you know how, or different reporting tools and bring them into what we call ogden one global dashboard for enterprise built on cloud using oracle's analytics cloud so we used Oracle's Analytics Cloud as, uh, as an underlying platform we, using autonomous data warehouse. We pre-invested in it. So our cloud lab has been spending last year, year and a half in creating this so that all customers who have EBS plus they have Informatica or OBIE and Discoverer or other Noetics, other tools, we can bring that into one single data insights platform on cloud. The benefit, of course, as you can understand, is the you, you're taking advantage of elasticity in cloud because you know you 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 are now able to increase, multiply the sources of data because the more data points you have, the better insights you can give. That is the second. Third, you're able to take advantage of native autonomous capability, which is machine learning and, and AI capability, which is not available on on-prem. Those are natively available. In the, in the cloud. So just consolidating all the reporting tools into one is not going to achieve much unless you take advantage of elasticity, machine learning, and autonomous capability. Yeah. So I think we've seen that. Um, yeah. Any other questions, Venkat? Yes, sir. So are Ringmaster and Cloud Tester inherent to Synergetic solution, or is it in a separate engagement? So, and what is the typical time to achieve these returns? So, yeah, so Ringmaster, uh, Cloud Tester, these <clears throat> are Solaritex products. And there are customers who are, who are also only using these products. For example, Cloud Tester is used by companies like Macy's, you know, is used by um, companies like Quest, AJ Gallagher. So there are a bunch of these customers that are who use just cloud tester for automation of not just e EBS, but also for their SaaS application. Because they don't have, they, they, it takes one tenth the cost of going and buying any testing tools out there. There are customers who use Ringmaster um, just as a product. So, so if we are migrating you to your cloud, migrating you to cloud, these are part of our differentiation to really enable you to accelerate your cloud migration, enable you to eliminate the risks due to dependencies on user, and also enable you to create a compelling business case. Hence, we are including 
the licenses of Ringmaster and Cloud Tester for you as part of migration so that you are able to create compelling business case and your journey to cloud is sooner than later. Right. So I think we can take one last question. Uh, so I'd like to see a demo of data next and what can it, what it can do to bring together various systems. Can this be used for non Oracle systems as well? Yes. So Data Next is an OAC platform, right? Um, so as I mentioned earlier, it, it is built using Oracle Analytics Cloud and um, underneath Autonomous Data Warehouse. So it is, you don't have to be an EBS customer to use Data Next. Yes, you could see the demo of Data Next and how it provides the insights. Right. Okay, so we have other questions as well, but uh, due to the time constraints, so we can close it for now, but we'll be answering all the questions over uh, the email. We'll, our team will reach out to you. I think, uh, you know, great. Uh, thank you everyone. We appreciate you being here. We'll be sharing the slides and recorded webinar in a day or two. And also we are conducting a virtual event uh, on uh, October 29th and 30th of October. Uh, I request you to go I think through. We should all join this uh, digital acceleration summit on October 29th and 30th. Join this digital acceleration summit, and you'll hear from some of the industry leaders on how they have um, embarked, and sh they'll share their experiences as well. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate all of you taking your time uh, this Sir, afternoon. Thank you very Thanks. much.